Maybe it's just my perception and my timing, but we seem to be going through somewhat of a renaissance in extruder designs for 3D printers these days. And that's in stark contrast to uh, printer designs. We're pretty much stuck with stupid Mendel Ender 3 clones coming from China, where all they change is the screen and a little bit of the, you know, the way that it looks a little bit on the outside, but functionally speaking, it's no better than the Ender 3 from like four years ago. So yeah. Printers in general are boring, but extruders are pretty exciting. So I previously reviewed these two and you guys seem to appreciate those videos well enough and I thought I'd do another one. Somebody left in the comments, uh, I can't remember which video, one of these two, but they left the suggestion that I review the Superfly extruder. And that is not an extruder that you can buy. What you do is you buy yourself a genuine Bond Tech, you pull the guts out of it and you 3D print a new housing so that you drop a lot of weight from the Bond Tech. And that is a pretty tantalizing notion, so I thought I'd give it a go. This is the Superfly Extruder. You can download this geometry from Thingiverse, and it's basically just a new housing to contain all of the guts from a Bond Tech BMG extruder. So it basically replaces this plastic housing with this plastic housing. And I've got this little part right here. I ordered the wrong size. And, uh, but anyway, there's supposed to be a Bowden tube receiver that slides down into that hole there. So putting this on the scale, we can see it weighs 13 grams, whereas the Bond Tech that it's replacing weighs 50 grams. So we're talking, was that like 37 grams of savings? Yeah, so basically the weight of these three rechargeable AAA batteries. And that is pretty substantial. But that ignores the most important component of an extruder, the stepper motor. So I have just a you know no-name Chinese stepper motor here, and it weighs 217 grams. Now the Bond Tech and by extension the Superfly have a gear ratio of three to one. So I think um, this is actually a decently sized. It could maybe be a little smaller. Maybe this size here. You can see they're the same height, but the uh, the black steel components are a lot less. So this isn't quite a pancake. I think this is gonna have enough power with that three to one, reasonably speaking. So about as lightweight as you'll get for the whole thing here, 230 grams. So saving 35 grams is, is a small percentage of the overall weight. The real gains that can be made with extruder design are in stepper motor design. This uses the guts out of my genuine Bontech extruder here. So there's no issues with, um, you know, cloning. You're not supporting thieves uh, by, by building this. In fact, you had to buy a Bontech to, to build this. Well, you didn't have to. You could go to China and get the, uh, get the knockoff components. So in a previous video talking about other extruders, um, I talked about the Bontech innovation in these dual drive gears. And you know what, guys? I was just wrong. I was wrong. This is not Bontech's original idea. As friend of the channel Michael Hathaway pointed out, this design has been in use in welders to feed the wire in welders. And it's, it's almost exactly the same concept as this. In fact, Michael even found this patent from 1962, which shows basically a, a dual driven hob gear for a wire welder. Look at that. See, there's the teeth engaging with each other and there's the hob gear. Now the difference is they're making a single component here with a five millimeter bore and gears that mesh with the hob gear up at the top. And then on this one, you can see they've got the um, needle bearings going into there. So that needle bearing deal where both of, the, both of the parts are identical and all they have to do is you know, find the right needle bearings. That could, if you're splitting hairs, that could be considered Bontex IP. Um, so it is, I still consider it bad form to be making carbon copies of this, but really, um, you know, any push that I was trying to make where Bontech has some sort of a, you know, moral claim over this design is, it's pretty weak. So how good is the Superfly extruder? Well, you guys, it's just a Bontech. The guts, it's gonna be all the functionality of a Bontech. So there's really no functional difference, it's just lighter weight. But the Superfly extruder, as it's been designed, is a Bowden type extruder. There's a an outlet for just a Bowden tube um, you know, holder right there. And you can see that I need to cut the shaft of my stepper motor here off just to give me some clearance for that Bowden tube to pop out of it. 
So that's that's not the greatest design feature, but hey, it does take off a little bit more weight even still. So this whole thing is basically cutting weight, making things as lightweight as possible, which is a goal that I can get behind, but it needs to be direct drive. And so that's what I'm going to do. Thankfully, this is an open source project and the step files, the editable files have been provided. So I can just pop those into my CAD program and make a mount for a hot end. So here is the Thingiverse page for the Superfly extruder and you can see all of the, the photos and documentation down there. I especially like this. The creator did a really good job presenting this. It's uh, it's nicely done, well done. Um, yeah, this makes it pretty clear what's going on here. You can see the uh, the original gears coming out of your Bontec BMG extruder and then this housing is what you're gonna print and it all goes together just like that. So I downloaded the geometry for these three parts, then imported it into my CAD program and got busy deleting some features. Like you can see, there's just a simple hole there to load the, uh, the filament through the top. And there's this whole flange piece there uh, at the bottom now, which mounts onto the, uh, what is that? The mosquito, the slice engineering mosquito hot end. So this should work out quite well. Let's get it on the printer and give it a test. And here's the extruder mounted to a pancake stepper motor. What I'm noticing when I spin this by hand, so let's just, um, I'm gonna spin that gear there and uh, try to get it to feed in. It is feeding, it does feed, but you can see right now, it's kind of not, it's kind of not feeding. You can see where the filament's going in. It's being pinched by the hob gear. This screw off to the side is having to hold that hob gear kind of cantilevered out there. And this other end down here is where the gears are meshing, the two, you know, the dual feeding gears. So if I pinch right across there, and then I spin that again, no problems. We got all the feeding that we need. So this basically is screwed down as tight as it can go. I can't get that any tighter. And unless I pinch that far end, um, it's not working. And just because I wanna get this thing tested in its current configuration, I'm gonna use a zip tie across the, uh, the back there to just sort of hold that opposite far end tight. I seem to have gotten the zip tie tight enough to where uh, I'm not getting skips anymore and it does seem to be working quite well. So let's put this thing through its paces. The black line has been marked. We need to completely bury the black mark there inside of the extruder so we can't see it anymore. And that will be 100 millimeters exactly. So let's do that at a feed rate of 345 millimeters per minute. Send. Yep, that's a success. Let's try it again at a feed rate of 375. Looks like we missed a few steps, but not very many. All right, throwing this on the scale, we can see it weighs 208 grams. My favorite hot end extruder combination here, the uh, BQH2 comes in at 222 grams. And I like this thing just because it's made out of almost entirely metal. So that's a that's a win to me. The, uh, the plastic here, I printed this with polycarbonate, so it's a very high temperature plastic and I might be able to get away with running this in a heated chamber, but uh, I'm not really gonna trust it nearly as much as I trust 100% metal for the housing and everything. And the gears, also metal. This gear here, plastic. This is the lightweight extruder here, the um, the Orbiter with its you know E3D V6, and it comes in at 191 grams. So basically this setup here is 20 grams heavier than the lightest weight extruder, and 20 grams happens to be pretty much the weight of two AAA batteries, so so that's not insubstantial, but uh, it's not a whole lot, especially considering just how much weight a stepper motor weighs. Now, this was uh, the one that I thought I would have to upgrade to. I thought I, I wouldn't be able to get away with this pancake, but I did, I got away with the pancake. So you can see I made this bracket here that screws into the backside of the, the stepper motor. So the stepper motor itself could be mounted to the frame of the printer and then the extruder, you know, hot in combination could dangle off the front of the, uh, the stepper motor. So there's many options as far as uh, of mounting this goes. I could also use this hole right here and you can see I've got these little like bits of geometry that kind of cradle the side of the extruder or the, uh, the stepper motor to keep it from moving. So with this single hole and a couple of pieces of geometry on the side, we could easily mount uh, this in a pretty precise manner. Now you can see that both of these have the same hot block, the same nozzle, and the same silicone uh, boot over all of that. So the difference would be the heat sinks 
uh, in the cold end of the hot end. This cold end heat sink is part of the actual extruder. So uh, kind of a neat integration there. But with this one, <laughs> we went with a much more expensive, the creme de la creme, best thing on the market, the Mosquito Hot End by Slice Engineering. So it's no wonder that we're getting better performance out of this one than out of both of these, right? The Mosquito is just fantastic. However, we are paying a weight penalty. That is a copper heat block. And so that's gonna be uh, substantially heavier than the aluminum. So without that copper heat block, I mean, I could measure it, but we're gonna get down into the realm of this one. And this extruder topped out at 315 millimeters per minute. This one was 345. This one also made 345, but uh, I think it starts to feel a little more than 345. And here's the kicker, you guys. All of these were run at 800 milliamps current sent to all of them. And both of these, the extruders or the stepper motors got really quite warm, like uncomfortably warm. With this one, I was way over clocking. You were not supposed to even run it in anything near 800 milliamps. With this little stepper motor, it wasn't, it was a little bit warm, but I probably could have bumped it up to a thousand. So I could have gotten more torque out of it still uh, to really run this thing uh, hard. And so that means that this one outperforms for sure. Uh, the maximum flow rate. And 300 and let's just call it 360 millimeters per minute, something like that. So if you do the math, that comes out to a X and Y travel speed, laying down a, a bead of filament, which is 0.4 millimeters, because that's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 0.4 millimeters and the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height. So that will lay it down at a speed around 175 millimeters per second. Pretty darn fast. I don't think most of us ever get to that high of a speed, although everybody's doing the speedboat benchy challenge these days, and that's a lot faster than 175 millimeters per second. But still, 175 as far as normal printing goes, uh, you don't need anything faster. So this is pretty much a winner if it only wasn't for the stupid zip tie. That portion of the design there is the Achilles heel and the reason why I don't think anybody should make this. You see guys, with the original Bontech design, you have a really secure way of holding that um, uh, hob gear against the other hob gear that goes inside there. So there's the pivot point and there's the hole where this screw is supposed to mount through. So we're holding this from both sides. We're not cantilevering off. Whereas with this design, What's going on here is a cantilevered motion. So we've got a screw that goes through this bit of the geometry and mounts to that far side, and it's holding this whole portion out there. So it can move just like my finger. It's like as if you pinched my finger right there and that can still move. Well, at the far end of this is the gears that engage for the two to mesh with each other so that the two hob gears uh, you know, spin with each other. And so that's not so tragic. The hob gear portion is up close to the screw so the, the cantilevered moment is not as, as extreme, but uh, it's still, as I showed you guys, leads to slippage. And the only way to, to alleviate the slippage is to clamp down on this end in some way, like this. You see this blue piece of geometry here that can slide back and forth like so and gets held in place with a um, with a screw. And so it clamps down onto the cantilevered arm piece right there. But as I've drawn this, it suddenly occurs to me that uh, there's another potential solution. What you could do is effectively brace the backside of the triangle. So as the forces try to rotate this like that, the green geometry is pushing back and holding it in place. There's always a solution. It's just a matter of how convoluted and how much work you're willing to put into it. Also, both of these are just ideas at the moment. They'll both need to be printed and tested because there might be some as of yet unforeseen drawback to these. So uh, the whole design needs to be redesigned for that but I haven't even talked about what it took to get this unit to be just so functional, to get the gears to spin without any internal resistance. I spent hours, and I'm not exaggerating in the slightest, I spent hours redrawing this. And then after I'd redrawn it, I also spent hours with a needle file in there, you know, cleaning it up, cleaning the little, the little portions of the geometry up that just didn't go quite right perfectly in, in the print. This circle, I, I, I printed it with shrinkage, so this is, is uh, goes to the exact measurements that it's supposed to go to, and yet I still had to get in there with my rotary tool here and just go like to open up this side uh, of, the, of the circle so that the gear, the, the big gear here, 
that gear, it was rubbing. And so I had to clear some, some spacers there. Now there is a um, more clearance version of this in the, in, the, uh, in the folder there on GitHub, or not GitHub, it's on um, Thingiverse. So you could print up the more clearance version, but I don't know about tolerances, you might have more of a problem with the, uh, with the arm flexing. Now with this arm, you can see it actually flexing. You see, I see that. But what, what's happened here is I've sized down, you see that little step? So I've actually sized down the, uh, the portion of the geometry that inserts into the portion of the main housing. And I did that because I wasn't able to get that to slide in uh, as the original files were given to me on Thingiverse. And looking at those geometries, I'm, I'm seeing why. They left zero clearance. So it's an interference fit. You always have to leave, usually 0.3 millimeters in my experience is a good uh, bit of clearance to leave if you want things to sort of like engage and slide within each other. and um, yeah, I could shove it on in there and just really use a lot of force and then use that screw tightened all the way down to hopefully get that thing to fully seat. And that might have, have worked a little better if I could, you know, but, but then we're going to lose any ability to pull this open, to undo the screw and get your filament out. So on a design like this, I can pull the door open, which allows me to get the filament past the hob gears and feed it on into the extruder by hand. Also, if I want to just you know, prime the nozzle, I can pull that back and shove it through when it's all heated up and, and everything works out fine. This is kind of a more classical spring-loaded door, you know, hot end device. And that's the same, same idea. You throw this lever to the side here and then you can push that through. You can manually feed filament through and all that. And even the Bond Tech is designed like that where you can pull this door back and feed through filament through manually. But with this design, I found you lose that ability because I have this thing cranked all the way down just to make up for the, the lack of holding power against the filament. And so if it was looser, I might be able to kind of grab it like this and push it with my thumb to kind of release it, but it's a bit awkward. So they've sacrificed usability in a big way just to get that weight savings. And the way that I was loading this is I would just start this into the thing and then spin it with my thumb and that gets you down in there, that gets you going. But the problem is as soon as you uh, tell the extruder to move a little bit, the control board will lock that extruder and you have to send the command to um, basically shut down all stepper motors or you have to try to like overpower the, the stepper with your hands, which is pretty tough on your skin. It doesn't feel very comfortable uh, just to get that fed through manually. So usability on this thing is quite low. Well, I'm gonna leave this project here, but there's a few things that I should say before I quit. First of all, uh, it's a decent project. Uh, I commend the original author uh, on his idea to lighten up the Bontech BMG. I don't know why uh, Bontech and E3D are not putting in more effort to make lighter weight hot ends. Um, they just seem to be focusing on the performance without getting the weight down. So there's certainly gains to be had in that regard. But like I said earlier, the largest gain by far is going to be had in stepper motor design. So that's not an easy thing that somebody can, can do. You're gonna have to talk to some pretty serious people in industry to figure out ways to lighten stepper motors, but that I believe is the future. So why am I unwilling to put any more effort into this? Well, it's because uh, I don't know how much better I'm going to get than the BMG you know, housing here when it's all said and done. And that's probably the same question that the original author had. Once you get to the same performance that this door introduces, you've suddenly added a whole lot more material, which has brought the weight back up and you only have maybe half the weight loss that we experienced. So 25 grams instead of, or even you know 20 grams instead of 35 grams of weight savings. And that's pretty insubstantial. So maybe the original Bontech BMG is just, you know, the best uh, balance of functionality and weight. Of course, no matter what you do, you're still going to be competing with the new Bontech product, that being the LGX, which is better in every way. Like this thing is really phenomenal and I will be re reviewing it at some point here in the, in the not too distant future. So uh, yeah, I think that maybe the original author has put all the work that he's going to put into this and I'm now in the same boat. And you guys might have noticed when we were on the computer that I did have a couple of other CAD drawings ready for printing, but um, 
it's just, it's not worth my time, you guys. I've got better extruders to move on to and install on printers. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Big, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. These are those guys. Without them, I would have quit making videos long ago. So thank you guys so much for keeping this channel going. And hey, I gotta say that I know somebody in the comments is gonna ask for these, the printable geometry, the modifications that I made, and uh, they're gonna make some sort of a stink about how I hide my stuff behind a paywall, even though I, I got an open source and it's, it's uh, what is it, the, um, the GNU GPL 3.0 license and, and all that. Well, here's the thing. By the letter of the law, that license says that if I sell anything having to do with this extruder, I must share the source files with the people that I sold something to, and I am not selling this. So I am not obligated to share with you guys. Right? This is not communism. You cannot force me to give you the fruit of my labor. You can't do it. And I'm thankful for that. So support the creators that you love, whether that's this channel, whether it's Bontech, or whether it's Slice Engineering, whoever it is that you love, give them your money. Help them to keep doing the thing that you love them for doing. And with that, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.